Last year, my 82-year-old father lost his battle with esophageal cancer. His death came 19 days after diagnosis, and although this might sound like a swift and merciful outcome, his suffering in his last days is something I will never be able to erase from my mind. Despite my father's pleas to his doctors to end his pain, he was pacified with more drugs and promises to keep him comfortable. The emptiness of these promises was revealed in the excruciating pain he endured, which no amount of morphine could subdue. As a psychologist whose role it is to preserve life, I understand the moral, social and ethical complexities associated with a sister dying. However, in cases of terminal illness, where death is inevitable and the preservation of life only serves to pacify the living, how can we give people the freedom to choose when and how their life should end? Um, I'm really sorry about that story. It's, it's a very sad one. And actually, my experience, um, my view on this is informed by, I guess, a, a somewhat similar experience. Um, when I was four, my father was diagnosed with cancer and then he died when I was 11. So really that kind of formative years of my childhood were being very close to someone who was dying. And the thing that I've taken from that experience is a very um, deep belief that people have the right to have a good death. Um, of course, as a politician, I don't just use my personal experiences to make decisions. We have to look at the evidence. And what the evidence, um, especially the Victorian um, parliamentary inquiry that's compiled a lot of this, the evidence shows us um, is that the, the fact that euthanasia is not legal in Australia is causing incredible pain to a lot of people. It's causing families to commit horrible crimes that are motivated only by love and compassion. It's causing doctors to break the law and it's causing incredible heartache for people who are watching their family member die in agonising pain and they're unable to do anything about it. Um, the Victorian Parliamentary Inquiry also found some really important things um, when they looked at other jurisdictions where euthanasia is legal. So the slippery slope argument, as we often call it, isn't really founded in reality. Uh, and where euthanasia is legal in different parts of the world, we see very, very small numbers of people using the laws, very, very small numbers of people. Um, but for a lot of the people who do use them, um, it, it's, it's knowing that they're there when they need them. And we see usually it's people who are in the very last weeks of a very painful death and a death where palliative care is just not going to be able to provide them with relief. So I think for that reason it is something we need to look at.